is an overview productivity class for people who have things to do that they want to do and a system, a way of doing them that is helpful. So what is a productivity system? A productivity system is a system or a series of steps that we go about in doing something to get something done. So essentially, a productivity system is a system to help you to do what is important to you. But I'm going to go over some major components, four major components in fact. The first major component is a calendar, and then a task manager system, a note systems, and then an overarching plan. Let me break those down. What is the calendar? We all know what a calendar is, but from an overview, a calendar is a place to organize time and organize events. That's what goes in the calendar. The task is everything that's action oriented. What do you have to do? This is assignments, this is tasks, chores, whatever. But note that it's action oriented. And the notes is information oriented, if it has any bit of information. And all of these three do work together. And I'm gonna talk about how they can work together well. So now that we know the three parts, the last part is the plan. And the plan is the most important. The notes, the calendar, the task manager, they are the daily effort that we're making or the consistent effort we wanna make. The plan is the direction of your energy or how, you're, how you take that effort and go towards where you want to go to get to the destination you're intending to get to. Now let me start with the calendar. So the calendar, like I said, is a place for all, all of your events. So if you have an appointment, a meeting, a class, a, whatever it may be, but those are the most common ones, it goes in your calendar. And your calendar should be something on every day that you intend to get work done that you check. And I think you should at least check it at the beginning and the end of your day and you can also look ahead. So weekly, you should look ahead to the next week at the least, I'd say up to probably about two months ahead of time, you can look. And then if people ask you, hey, can you go do this thing? Pull it out on your phone, if it's a digital calendar, or even a paper one if you have it on you. Let me check my calendar, let me get back to you. These are great ways to take control of, or at least gain intention over your time. So that's the calendar. That's a brief overview of the calendar. So. Uh, let me give a brief overview of how to use the calendar. So we have all these things that are going to come in and if you're a student or a young working professional who feels overwhelmed, you want to start with put all the non-negotiables on the calendar. What are things that you have to be that? Put on, on your calendar. Then you put on your negotiables, things that you want to do that are important to you and go from most negotiable to least negotiable. That's a, a start to, and then as you're going through your day, stick to the calendar. Use your phone to set timers, to start on time, to end on time. Try to stick to it. The reverse, this kind of gets a little advanced, but the reverse can be tracking your time and seeing where is your time going with the calendar. Okay, the second part is the task manager. The, a task manager is a place where you, I, I think it's best to have one place for all of your tasks and then you can organize them based on your role. But a, a task manager or a task list is all of the associated tasks. And you can organize them different ways, but have a place where you put your to-dos. Rather than just being random, either in your head or post-it notes or whatever, just keep putting them in one place. A big part of this is keep putting things in the same place. But what is a task manager? What is your task list? It's a list of what is actionable. What are things that you have to do? Something that can be completed goes on the task list. Going to an event can't necessarily be completed. You went, but you can't go ahead of time. A task can be done ahead of time. It is less time dependent. Now some things do have other more complex things of dependencies or you're waiting on somebody. And I think that when you're going through your task list, there's two other bits. There's three bits of information. You need to know what to do. Then you need to know when you need to do it, a due date, like what's the last time that you possibly need to have this done, and then a status, what's going on with this. And so some sample statuses I have that are listed, some of the important ones I wanna highlight are the ready and active. The active, the ready and active, the ready list is all the things that you could work on. The active list, if these are the three things today I'm gonna to focus on, and a ready does not get to move till active until the active thing is done, complete, or waiting, and waiting on something else. Now, when do you do the tasks? That's how your tasks and calendar start to work together using a concept called time blocking. And this is where you say, during this 30 minutes, I'm gonna do these tasks. And you can put that block of time on your calendar to do that task 
and then in that time, you either get it done or you don't. The recommendation is to double. So if you think the task will take 15 minutes, give yourself 30 minutes in the calendar, do that thing. And I think I've been, I've really experienced a lot of help in being completion oriented. Try to finish it because then you can cross it off the list. You don't have to come back and finish it in that 30 minutes, however long it takes you. And then boom, you're done with your block. Great. So people also use the Pomodoro technique to, to fill in that as well. But time blocking or Pomodoro can fit in there. And I also want to add on the task list, really important. After you have your list of tasks, don't work top to bottom. You need to think, what is most important? What is most important right now? The Eisenhower matrix is a really good way to evaluate this. He has an urgent and important category. So some things are urgent and important, and other things are not urgent, not important. And you should work in the order of important, urgent needs to be done, then urgent, then important, and there. The last is notes. This is to have one place for all of your notes. And I think the para method from Tiago Forte is a simple but useful method. So he goes projects, areas, resources, and archives. And this goes is organized from most to least actionable. I'll link Tiago's Forte where, video where he explains it really well. But for the quick start, projects are things that have an end date. Areas are things that don't really end. So for me, medical school is an area right now. It will end in four years, but that seems like a very long-term project. So I'm going to put it as an area in my life. Resources are things that someday, and an archive is for completed projects and completed areas. A project might be my taxes. These are things that have a list of steps, a list of things. And you keep all the information associated with it in that projects folder. Yes, so there's the notes. But a notes is a place where you keep all of the information, a notes system. Last is a plan. You can have this system that helps you do all these things, but if you're not saying where you want to go with all this activity and interest, then what is the point? And so a plan is a direction for all of the activity. What are you moving toward? Where are you trying to go? And I really like uh, Cal Newport's multi-scale planning idea where he has a plan for different time scales. So here I've mentioned the annual, what do I want to do this year? What do I want to, so then you break that down. If I need to do these things this year, then what am I going to do this quarter? And then to get that done this quarter, what do I need to do this week? And you draft a week plan and you execute the week plan. And every week you're rewriting the week plan based on the quarter plan, which is informed by the year plan. And you can go into a, a, a life or a decade kind of epochs, sections of time, but that's how you group or chunk the time for the plan to move towards what's important to you. And I think the most important part of this is that that can change. Okay, so we've talked about all three parts and how they work together. We've talked about a calendar, that it's a place to organize your time. Use one calendar, put everything on one calendar. Have one task list, put everything on the task list. Check these daily, ideally at the beginning and the end of your workday. Feel free to recheck in at any time you need to, but when you want to get something done, have one place that you are looking to for this information of what do I need to do, and if everything is crossed off, I can know I have everything done. There's nothing, there's no ancillary things. And notes have that information in the same place. How does this work in, the, in an actual life in, a, uh, in an academic setting where you're in high school, where you're in college, or a graduate school setting, or whether you're a working adult and you're wanting to learn something? The general flow of information comes from this code algorithm, again from Tiago Forte. The, how, I have, how I think of it is capture, organize, distill, express. So capture, have an inbox, all these things get collected. And I like to collect them right where they need to go. So if there's an event, it goes into my calendar. Then organize, organizing is that productivity system. So in your capture, you are organized. Or in like your notes, you might just have an inbox and then you organize from there into, oh, from my inbox, okay, every week I need to put in new projects, areas, resources where this thing needs to go. Distill, I think of this as the action part where you're getting things to completion and then express is share. That's when you're, you're done or you're sharing what you're trying to do or you, you have made it to what that end point you have worked towards to get to, whether it's a project or completing a house project, something like that. And that's it. I think that's a good overview. I want to talk through how does this work 
for a student to kind of give an example of some things you can do. So if you have like an assignment due, it'll go in the task manager, and then you just set aside time to work on this thing. So estimate, oh, it's gonna take me two hours to do this assignment, whatever you think. And you put that time in your calendar, and then when you go to work on it, or when you're even planning to work on it, I would really encourage you to ask yourself the question, when am I done? What am I trying to do in this block of time? And finishing the homework can be really daunting to start, so then you wanna chunk it down into smaller chunks until you have such a clear chunk, it's your brain is easy to understand what is the next step, and you only have to know the next step. You don't need to write down all 10 steps and then check them off in order. So work on the next step, and you can always think of the next step. So if you have to write a paper, oh, what do I need to do? I need to do research. Research for this paper. Okay, what do I, and you, you break it down until you have such a simple list of I'm gonna do this, and then once that's done, you think of the next one, and then the next one, and the next one until you're complete. Now, I will say, if you do the same sort of work over and over again, this is where the idea of a template comes in. A template or a checklist is a series of steps that are repeated and you use that framework that you build once over and over again to build efficiency. So, oh, I'm doing research. Okay, well, how do I like to do research? I wanna answer these three questions. I'm gonna do an event, I'm planning an event. We all plan many events in our lives. Okay, and I like to answer the questions, who, what, when, where, why, how, I'm just like a journalist. So, who's gonna come? That's your guest list. When is it? And when is two parts? When is the date and when is the time? Where is it? What's the location? Does it have an address? These are all things you can put in your notes and pro tips, you can put them in your calendar as well. So a little calendar events and Google Calendar or something like that, they have a place for notes or a description. You can add that information in there, put the information where you will use it, but also you have a note system that I know I can look here and the information is gonna be there. So that's just an overview of a, a productivity system, mainly oriented towards students that are feeling overwhelmed. And then when you need a break, take a break. Life is not about productivity. This system is supposed to make doing all the stuff you need to do easier so you have more hours to do what you need to do. If you wanna do it in an efficient way, you can use the system. And if you don't wanna do it in an efficient way, you don't have to use the system. And this system, I haven't given a lot of details because this is a backbone. This isn't to, this is how you do the thing. This is a series of ideas for you to connect to make it your own of okay, I have this thing to do, okay, I'm gonna break it down, I need to do it this day, this time. You have a way of navigating the forest, through the forest. So I'm not telling you this is the way to get through the forest, I'm saying here's a machete, here's a way to make a trail, you have to go make your own trail now. Make the system your own. A part of this is being personal, but I've highlighted these because even though that everyone has their own way, there are ways that are, that are more consistent than that and I'll try to link some of the resources that are helpful in that. But that's an overview of a productivity system.